I want to explore the concept of degenerate doping in this video. And what degenerate doping means, it's a really fancy word for very, very high doping. And uh, so let's, you know, let's first see what happens if you increase the doping in your semiconductor. So let's say I have this uh, as the band gap of my semiconductor. And uh, I add I add donor atoms to it and I keep on increasing the number of donor atoms I have. So let me draw the Fermi level in the semiconductor. So if the semiconductor is intrinsic, if the semiconductor is intrinsic, the Fermi level will lie somewhere close to the center. And now what will happen is that if you keep on increasing the number of dopings or if you increase the number of uh, donors in this case, this Fermi level will progressively move close to your close to your conduction band. So if I increase the number of dopants, it will move more closer. If I increase even more, it will move even closer. If I keep on increase the number of dopants or number of donor atoms, in this case even more, it will keep on moving close and close and it might even cross the conduction band. So it can cross the conduction band. Let's, you know, let's see when it can cross the conduction band. So if my if my number of ionized uh, dopant atoms, if my number of ionized dopant atoms is more than is more than the effective density of states is more than the effective density of states in my conduction band, then my Fermi level will be in fact inside my conduction band. So at the good question to ask is that at what point at what point do I call it degenerate? At what point do I call my semiconductor degenerate? So a good approximation for that, a good approximation for that is when my, when my Fermi level moves at a distance of 3 kT close to the conduction band. So let me draw that scenario. So this is my semiconductor again and my Fermi level, it essentially as I increase the number of dopants, it moves from the center and it moves close to the conduction band and it can even cross the conduction band. So a good, a good uh, point to call the semiconductor degenerate is when this Fermi level, it approaches at a distance which is 3 kT from the, from the edges of your band. So whenever this distance is less than 3 kT, or this distance if I'm adding acceptor is less than 3 kT. It's a good, you know, we can call this semiconductor degenerate. So whenever my Fermi level lies in this range, then my semiconductor is non-degenerate. And when it's in this range where it's, you know, either very close to the conduction band or inside the conduction band, in this case very close to the valence band or inside the valence band, then I'll call my semiconductor degenerate. Also when I've added acceptor and my Fermi level is close to the valence band or inside the valence band, then also I have degeneracy in my semiconductor. So what are some of the implications of having this uh, degenerate semiconductor? And we have already talked or I've mentioned them before, but let me restate them. So one of the, one of the consequences of that is you can no longer assume a complete ionization of your dopant. So typically our dopant level, they lie, you know, they lie somewhere over here where it's also very close to the conduction band. And so we cannot, if our Fermi level is very close to that uh, dopant level, we cannot assume a complete ionization of the dopants. So it's always good to go back to the basics and we'll use this uh, Fermi Dirac statistics to give us the amount of uh, dopants which are ionized and uh, we i talked about this in a separate video how this uh, how this fermi dirac statistics is used for the case of dopants also for when i'm calculating the concentrations of uh, electrons or holes again i cannot use i cannot use a boltzmann einstein statistics i cannot use a boltzmann einstein statistics so if you remember this formula for uh, for the for the number of electrons which was related to the effective uh, density of uh, states was derived using a Boltzmann uh, Einstein statistic so i cannot use this uh, cannot use this simplified form in fact i'll have to go back to a fermi dirac statistics and i'll have to 
I'll have to integrate the density of states and my position of my Fermi level, which gives me the probability of occupation. And I'll have to use that or, you know, it will complicate my life uh, a little bit, but this is the right thing to do over here. We cannot use a uh, Boltzmann Einstein statistics because our Fermi level is very close to the conduction mat. So these are some of the, you know, some of the implication in terms of uh, the math, which happens if you have, if you have a high amount of doping, but let's, let's, you know, let's, let's see what happens if you go even further. So let's have, what happens if you keep on adding more and more, more and more of these, more and more of these uh, donor atoms. So what happens in, in your band diagram? So let me draw my band diagram. So I... This is my EX diagram. So this 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 line over here it represents represents my poli position as I am moving along the lattice, and this Y axis represents the energy. So I have my conduction band and my valence band, and I have mentioned that our donor atoms or these donor states, each of them is represented by this. Each of them is represented by this discrete dot, which represents when I encounter a encounter a dopant atom. So what if I I keep on adding more and more donor atoms. So if I keep on adding more and more donor atoms, I'll essentially encounter my encounter these donor atoms more frequently and you know there'll be a there'll be more of these dots as I move along my move along my lattice. What if I add even more? So if I add even more, I'll have even more and more of these dots. And as you can see, am I, if I keep on adding more, instead of having this discrete dots, I'll see a, I'll form a band and I'll have a, a more, you know, I'll have these dopant atoms interact with each other and they'll form in fact a band or this, which is, I can call this as a dopant band. And to imagine this physically, what is happening is that let's assume previously I had, I had just a silicon lattice. So I had these silicon atoms and and there was maybe one dopant or, you know, there was one phosphorus atom over here. And if I look at the potential in this case, so each of them was giving me a potential associated with silicon. And when I approach this phosphorus, I had, you know, another potential associated with the phosphorus. But if I have, if I had too many of these, uh, too many of these uh, phosphorus atoms, so if I had maybe one phosphorus here, another phosphorus over here, and then, you know, there, there's a very high concentration of these uh, phosphorus atoms. These atoms or these potentials which come from these, uh, from these uh, individual dopants, they'll start to interact with each other and they result in formation of this uh, dopant band. And and uh, there, the common term which is used to describe this is uh, band gap narrowing, band gap narrowing, or another another term which is used to describe that is band tail states. And let me let me uh, let me describe what the, I mean by tail states. So band tail states mean that usually in a semiconductor I have uh, this uh, conduction band. Let me use the same color. So I have this conduction band and I have this uh, valence band. So if I plot the density of states over here, so if I plot the density of states uh, over here, this density of state, it for a 3D semiconductor, it starts to increase when I have this, uh, when I go above my conduction band and I have this density of state, which is also in the case of 3D semiconductor, given by a square root dependence when I go below the valence band. Now, if I add, if I add a lot of these uh, dopant uh, atoms, they form essentially a band of their own and they start to contribute, they start to contribute these band tail states. So they start to essentially contribute these states, which are below or which are in the forbidden region, which are below the conduction band or above the valence band. And these are called as the tail states. And what they essentially do is they also reduce the band gap. So if my band gap previously was this, now my effective band gap where I have no density of states is essentially reduced to, to this smaller, smaller, smaller band gap. So a, a one way to mathematically describe is that this band gap instead of being uh, equal to EG is now being given by beta EG. And correspondingly, my law of mass action, it also changes. So my concentration of P into N, which was previously given by NC, NV, and then exponential of minus EG. Now it is given by this 
exponents of my reduced band gap, which is my previous band gap multiplied by this band gap uh, narrowing factor. So this is one consequence of that. Another consequence of that is that now you have essentially this, this, this another dopant band which can contribute to the transport uh, as well. So, for example, what can happen is that you have, uh, you have these, uh, you have these, uh, you have now these uh, dopant atoms and they have formed these uh, band of their own. So they have formed this uh, band of their own. So electrons and holes which were essentially being transported or which was being, uh, uh, whose mobility was given by this curvature of my conduction band, now essentially it will be trapped or you know it will, it can transport through this, uh, through this uh, band states and it will transport with a much lower mobility because of that. So a few places where we do see these uh, these effects uh, come into picture is uh, for the case of, of example you have a HBT or you have a BJT transistors and you typically have a very high doping in the emitter so you have a very high doping in the emitter and again this uh, degenerate uh, doping or these band gap narrowing it starts to starts to essentially degrade the band gap of your degrade the band gap of your emitter which is usually not a good thing similarly in a lot of our uh, amorphous materials in a lot of uh, materials like amorphous silicon or the materials which are used for making uh, oled displays you again see a lot of these uh, band tail states or these uh, these states which exist uh, below your band gap and they result in a much lower mobility of electrons and mobility of holes in these uh, materials so usually these uh, these effects are not desired so we usually don't want uh, band tail states but you do get them if you have very high concentration of dopants